What's up, YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. I'm back again with part two of this series, the 12 volt auxiliary power system, solar panel system that I'm installing in my solar shed. So I've decided to put this into three parts. This part is going to finish up the wiring and the rest of the components. And then I'm gonna do a part three, which is gonna talk about why a 12 volt auxiliary system is useful and why I decided to do it. So here's the rest of what we're working with today. Here is the pro watt inverter, the uh, pure sine wave inverter that I have laying around that I want to use for this project. And I also have a fuse block that I'm going to use that I had laying around and I know that this 100 amp fuse in there is too big for the system. I'll replace that at a certain point. I also have some wire and I also have some battery lugs. So the first thing that I need to do is attach these lugs and the wiring to the battery and connect it to the inverter. Now you can see here how the wire attaches to these lugs. I like this because I can attach multiple wires to it without even removing the lug. And it uses Allen wrenches to tighten everything down. So these are pretty cool. So I started with the negative cable and attached one end of the black wire into the lug. And that is going to be the wire that's going to go continuously all the way up to the inverter. I snugged it down with one of these little cl uh, clips that uh, nails into the board and then brought it up here to the inverter and I'm going to attach it to the negative terminal of the inverter. Now that may seem basic to a lot of you but I am trying to go through this step by step for those who maybe haven't done something like this before and kind of explain what I'm doing as I go. Now the positive side is going to be a little bit different because I need to use that fuse holder to basically give us some protection to protect the inverter but also to protect from short circuit fires and things like that. So I connected the red wire to the battery with the lug below and then I brought it up to the uh, fuse holder and connected it there and then brought another end from the fuse holder over and I'm going to connect it to the positive side of the terminal uh, on the inverter. So here you can see what the battery looks like. Again, got the two lugs connected and one wire um, going in from one side to the corresponding side on the inverter. I've got them both clamped down to the wall there and the positive side goes through the fuse holder and the negative side just goes straight to the back of the inverter to the negative side. So now that all of that is connected, I can power on the inverter and you can see that it's successfully hooked up and it is showing the uh, voltage of the battery which is 14.6 because the solar is engaged. Everything's working great. Now this inverter has two uh, AC receptacles on the front but I am going to plug in quite a few devices. Uh, none of them are really high wattage so it's okay to distribute the power with a power strip. So I'm going to, this is uh, that I'm plugging in is a outdoor uh, floodlight that's on the front of the shed. So that will finally have power and be able to run around the clock if needed. And then I have the power strips. I'm going to be installing or connecting um, a bunch of things that will charge by battery power or recharge batteries, I should say, such as my uh, battery powered lawnmower batteries and uh, string trimmer batteries that will use that charger right there. And I also have some lights and some power tools and some other things that I'll be plugging into this power strip over time. Now, some of you are probably thinking, uh, you can do that with any solar power system. Why weren't you doing this kind of stuff with the 24 volt system? And that's a legitimate question. I'm gonna get into that in the next video. There is some flexibility and some things that this auxiliary system will be able to do for me which I can't really do or can't do well with the 24 volt system. So stay tuned for the next episode and I'll explain further. That does it for this video. Stay tuned for part 3, the conclusion of this series, and thanks for watching.